On September 11th, Alex was the first responder to activate the emergency response system during the initial seconds of the attack on the World Trade Center. This is Bob Gray speaking at the corners of Church and Fulton Street in New York City, just opposite where the World Trade Center was. This evening, we have an honored guest with us, Alex Lutsky, emergency medical technician at New York Fire Department. We're going to be asking him some questions about his experiences that day. I understand that you were located uh, on the site during the World Trade Center catastrophe, the terrorist attack. We wanted to ask you some questions about that, and particularly wanted to know how it came that you happened to be one of the first individuals to be here at the World Trade Center for that incident. Very well. Uh, I was uh, with my partner, Eric, and uh, we had some small talk in the ambulance, and around 8.45, a, a plane uh, uh, traveling very low. Before me, very clearly, was the World Trade Center. Uh, we were near the Brooklyn Bridge, which is uh, a few blocks away from where we're standing right now. As I said, the plane is uh, very low. It's going to hit. It's going to hit, and it slammed then right into the North Tower and exploded. Your immediate reaction when you saw that incident take place was to do what? My immediate reaction was to radio a uh, signal in uh, and let them know that uh, what we had witnessed so that the emergency response system could be activated. So your ambulance was near the Brooklyn Bridge, facing the World Trade Center, and you were able to come right down into this area. Uh, and you actually saw the plane come in and hit the building. Correct. When you arrived at the scene, could you describe what you saw as you approached the corner that you parked at, which is right over here at the corner of Fulton and Church by the edge of Trinity Church Graveyard? Okay, um, right here at the corner, we, my partner uh, Eric and I, we, we pulled here. I was the, uh, being the first unit at the scene, I was the, um, the communications officer and he was the triage officer. And uh, so we tried to assume those roles. It was rather difficult do that because uh, we were in the middle of uh, what was obviously at this point a disaster. Uh, to our uh, right as we were facing World Trade Center 5 was part of the landing gear of the plane and there was a lot of frantic uh, movement of people down below uh, where we were at. Uh, within seconds to a minute or so later there was a uh, sea or wave of people that came rushing out. Out of this of, building right out, here thousands of people. Came That's out. amazing. Thousands. Now I know the World Trade Center was on the other side of Building 5, but you're saying they were coming out of this whole plaza area at one time. Uh, I suppose they tried to get into the subways, uh, but did any of them speak with you or did you yourselves go into the building, uh, which would be right here in the, in the direction we're facing now? No, we couldn't get into the building. Uh, there was too many people coming out of it. And uh, at, at uh, certain points, yes, a lot of people were afraid, they were, they were in terror, they were all running for their lives, but certain people did stop, uh, ask us what was going on, wh what they should do. We directed them to get out of the area, and then there were others who were obviously injured. As time went on, the ones that were injured came out, it was like a minute or two later, and there were uh, various burns and, and uh, fractures and, and uh, you know, uh, lacerations and things of that kind, but most of them ran for their lives, and we tried to help a couple of them, but uh, the chaos and with debris falling, they ran for the, they, they ran as well. The outside perimeter at at this particular time was was most dangerous because that's where you had a lot of falling debris uh, from the building, and uh, it would have either been safer to leave the area or be in the building. By the time that you had gotten to be able to help people, I understand that other rescue units had come into the area. Of course, you weren't able to be in contact with them, were you? Okay, our communications did fail us, and it wasn't uh, long before other uh, uh, emergency response units were at the scene. How, how did you uh, react when the second explosion occurred? Did you, did you have any comprehension uh, beyond this explosion that it could have been a terrorist attack? What was your immediate uh, thought about the second explosion? Well, the first explosion, uh, when I witnessed it, I thought it was an accident. Yes. The second explosion, um, although we didn't have much time to really think, uh, I sensed and felt that we were probably at war. So you thought this could possibly be an attack on America at that time? And I understand you were located just south of where we're standing. Mm -hmm. uh, my concern at this point is, is that the South Tower is going to come down first, 
Uh, what happened as that building began to crumble? Well, uh, first, uh, I, uh, I felt the ground, the air, uh, rumble. It was like an eruption. And uh, I heard a lot of people uh, screaming and starting to run. As I looked up, I saw the, uh, the top of uh, the South Tower uh, begin to collapse and then it started to just come down like that. Yes. Uh, I, uh, I, I knew that I had made it uh, without injury or losing my life on West Street. I really didn't believe that I was ever going to make this. I didn't think there was a way to outrun it. I didn't think there was a way that I was going to survive this one. Uh, I made, I believe, a little attempt and uh, sprinted, a, sprinted a little bit, but by that time, uh, by that time, it, it, it came down. The cloud of dust enveloped you. Well, it, 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 it totally uh, went black. The sound was, uh, it was the loudest sound I could ever have imagined. It was deafening. It was, uh, it was like being in a, a volcanic eruption. I, I, I failed to, I, I, I failed to find words to best describe it, but it was, uh, it was the uh, most incredibly powerful uh, experience in magnitude that I've ever been in, in, in. and it was uh, totally black. I couldn't see anything, and uh, I couldn't breathe. I, I, I was uh, unable to breathe. It was the air was filled with just particulate matter. Uh, there was a lot of air pressure as well, and um, as I was uh, making uh, help, um, helpless motions about me, trying to feel around me. I, I was I. I thought I should have been crushed by then, uh, but I and I was not. I was, as I say, I wasn't able to breathe. But I was trying to feel around me, and uh, and I, I was walking towards a direction that I didn't know what the direction was. Later, I later uh, found out that that's the direction I ended up. And I uh, there was um, there was something that I felt I didn't, wasn't sure what it was because there was so much particulate matter. Even the things that you touched uh, were not were not definitive as to what they were, you know, and so I uh, started hitting it with my radio, and uh, when I uh, did, I felt it give way, and I heard a faint sound. Later, I learned, realized that it was, uh, it was um, uh, the glass of a van, the, the, okay. the side uh, panel glass of a van. Uh, when, when I felt it give way, and it, as I say, there was a faint noise, and it turned out to be glass, everything is muffled, my ears are, are stopped up with concrete, so I can't hear. Uh, very well at all and uh, so it gave way I started feeling what then became as on the interior of the van I, I, I slipped into it up to my waist and then I leaned forward till my head was uh, inside the van close to the floor I had taken my helmet off and I had my turnout coat around my face and I started to begin uh, 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 to take slow uh, breaths. I couldn't really take an effective breath, and before I had done that, uh, I had removed about a golf ball size of, of mass of concrete and particulate matter out of my mouth. It's actually and, collected in your mouth. Yeah, it, it came from like the last breath I had taken. Everything. It was almost like being buried in sand. I mean, it was. I remember you describing it as if you were swimming in sand at yeah, one point. That's, yeah. That's a frightening thought. Yeah. Well, I after I. Uh, was in the van for three to five minutes, things uh, did seem to settle where I could at least see a foot or two in front of me. And I began to realize that I was in a van and I realized that I was, uh, seemed that I was on Fulton Street. I know the area real well. I worked the area for many years. So uh, they were, uh, you know, it started looking a little familiar to me. And I realized that I was going in the direction of the hospital and that's the direction I went to. I, I still haven't been able to take a real effective breath I did have a little bit of breathing, but I was still, uh, you know, trying to take a breath, a good breath. I was coughing out a lot of, uh, of particulate matter. I made it down to the hospital in about three, four minutes, and uh, I went into the uh, emergency room, and it was uh, it was crowded. It was a lot of groaning. There was a lot of blood. There was uh, it was uh, it really looked. Uh, Horrific, gruesome, and horrific. Yeah, yeah, there was a couple of nurses and uh, a doctor that came to my assistance when I went there. I basically got washed down real quickly. I didn't take any clothing off. I just had my helmet off. 
I had my face, uh, you know, pretty much dunked under a sink and get all this particulate matter out of my uh, my uh, my face, my eyes, my ears, and try to clear my uh, mouth out as much as I could. I was given some oxygen, and also I was monitored uh, for my oxygen saturation level. Uh, what can you tell us what happened after that? Okay, I met up with a firefighter and a police officer, and uh, we. Uh, all three of us were pretty much looking for our commands and uh, and our people and uh, to do our job and uh, we kind of like uh, kind of made a pact between us that we were going to stick together because everything looked pretty chaotic and and uh, so uh, we did that and we started looking and uh, I did meet up with some of the people from my battalion but a lot of others were missing and my partner was still missing and I was uh, coming back to uh, this area here that you see. Yes. And we ended up uh, right here at, uh, around Church and Day, a little lower. I noticed uh, my uh, my ambulance that was parked there earlier was in flames. Uh, and uh, then the three of us together heard that same rumble, that same uh, that North earlier. Tower was now coming down? The North Tower was now coming down. We did not even turn around. We did not look. We ran as fast as we could. Which direction? And we went up Day Street. An old-fashioned chocolate shop. As we slammed the door shut, it was almost hard to shut it with the pressure. Uh, everything went totally black. Something so went, you were somewhat protected against this, I somewhat, suppose. There was, oh, yeah. I mean, we had a lot of areas where there was billowing in some of the uh, particulate matter. And you could, uh, you know, but for the most part, we were protected. What I'd like to know is if you could describe to me how this entire experience began to impact on you as a Christian when I believed that the uh, that I wasn't going to make it when this first collapse at the South Tower was taking place I really did not believe that I was gonna survive that I was resigned to it at that point and I was in prayer in my mind I was in prayer and um, I I wasn't asking for my life to be spared what I was more interested in was was I pleasing to the, to, to the Lord and uh, did I uh, did I fulfill uh, what I believe to be my my obligations to, to to my heavenly Father and my Lord and the Lord Jesus? Your sense of desire to know if you had been faithful, right. as the scriptures say, even unto death. I mean, yes. this would be obviously very much on your mind at that instant. Yes, uh, it's impacted on me uh, in every aspect of my life. I've become I've I've rededicated myself uh, to helping uh, mankind. Uh, I do that through my job as a uh, EMT at New York City Fire Department, and I'm also very uh, committed to my uh, my church, Bible students that I uh, that I uh, I fellowship with. That I have very strong uh, bonds with them, and um, and uh, more importantly, my uh, relationship to uh, to God and uh, to my Lord Jesus Christ is is very very uh, um, uh, committed. And I uh, have a, a better appreciation for knowing what the Lord's will is for me. I, I'm, I'm very thankful that you did, of course, survive this experience and are able to benefit from it. How, in a practical way, has this changed your life? If... You know, Bob, uh, we're, we're all uh, told that we're we are to experience trials. Uh, and uh, we don't choose what they are or how they come about. But what... Uh, what this experience has done for me uh, has um, made it so that what I believe I can truly exercise faith in. So every day I, I, uh, I pray to God. Every morning that I wake up I am on my knees and I pray to God. And I've been doing that since the World Trade Center incident. Uh, very grateful that the Lord spared my life and uh, also gave me a better understanding of, uh, of what I understand His will is for me. We know now where you were on 9-11, and a lot of us can probably, in fact, probably all of us can remember where we were on 9-11. But the question that remains and that we are trying to deal with this evening is the question, of course, where was God on 9-11? And what does the Bible say? And uh, we're thankful that you could be here with us, and thank, thank you. you very much for thank being you very with much, us. Bob. Really appreciate that. I'll give you a little hug here. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye now.